Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne. This is a teaching. I, I've taken a while uh, off uh, teaching. I, I got a bit tired and I got a bit uh, busy uh, making books and uh, I've been pretty busy. But uh, we're going to return to uh, Corinthians uh, here. Uh, and, and Paul is uh, talking about uh, his life as an apostle. And uh, I wonder if... Uh, Many uh, modern-day American apostles uh, live this sort of life. Uh, so it's in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 4, um, verse 9, starting verse 9. For I think that God has displayed us, the apostles, last as men condemned to death. For we have been made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. Um, so there's a couple of things that are different there. Uh, first of all, uh, he's saying that uh, God has uh, displayed uh, them uh, as uh, leaders and uh, apostolic leaders and uh, people full of revelation and truth and uh, the directions of God, uh, which uh, things come through with an apostle, uh, he said that God has displayed them last. In other words, uh, they're not the most important. Uh, the least, they're the least important, and that they're, they're the least uh, recognized. And uh, this is uh, totally opposite uh, to the modern apostle who uh, is constantly on uh, billboards. Uh, recognizing he's going to speak at a conference and uh, you've got a picture of him and it's got uh, Apostle John Smith and uh, they're always lined up and on the advertising material and they're, they're not uh, displayed last, they're displayed first. Um, also, <clears throat> Paul recognized that he was a man condemned to death, that uh, his his future, he knew even as he was writing this, mean that he was going to be a martyr uh, for Christ. And uh, I was talking to some Chinese. I, I've said this before, but I was talking to some Chinese. The word apostle came up and the Chinese uh, person uh, got angry and said, uh, you, you Australians throw that word apostle around uh, really easy, but... Uh, in China, if you're called to an apostleship, uh, you know that you're going to be martyred. Uh, every apostle in China is martyred, eventually caught and killed. And because they're the leadership of the church, uh, the authorities are especially after them, uh, the leaders all the time. And uh, if uh, you get called to be an apostle in China, one thing you do know is uh, that you're a man condemned to death. Uh, so um, that's what uh, it was in the early days. If you're an apostle, you're condemned to death. And <clears throat> history records that 11 of the disciples uh, were killed. And even John was sent to slavery on an island um, but uh, before they sent him there, they put him in a vat of oil uh, to kill him. And uh, he survived that miraculously. So they sent him uh, to an island. But then uh, the Apostle Paul said that his life is made a spectacle to the world, both to angels and to men. So uh, his life uh, shocked angels. He was a spectacle to angels. Um uh, and uh, I, I'm sure uh, the angels were fascinated uh, with the way he preached and uh, the power that he walked in. Uh, you can be a spectacle without uh, being looked down upon. Uh, and I believe uh, the angels uh, wouldn't have been uh, looking down on him, but uh, would have been shocked with his life. And, and, and also, man, I, I don't uh, believe a spectacle... Uh, there has to typically be something, a shameful uh, thing. I, I think that uh, 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 you could uh, render the word and, and a surprise to both angels and men. We are fools for Christ's sake, uh, but you are wise in Christ. 
We are weak, but you are strong. You are distinguished, but we're dishonored. So um, I was was called uh, by the Holy Spirit uh, to join a group of uh, Robin Bullock and Julie Green. And uh, I personally believe <clears throat> that uh, those two Trump prophets uh, may speak on behalf of God a lot, but they, I believe uh, they speak from the power of wrong spirits and uh, they're deceived. And I believe, personally believe Trump became an idol. And uh, because of that, God didn't allow him to be elected again. And uh, I personally believe any prophet uh, promoting a Trump at this day uh, is a false prophet. And so I joined uh, their websites because they had massive uh, followings on the website that Julie Green uh, website had 100,000 people and I kept on teaching and posting things there. I was getting a lot of likes, but I eventually... I uh, started calling out Julie Green and Robin Bullock uh, publicly and uh, they uh, blocked me for a site. But I, I seem to be a fool. I seem to be a total idiot uh, uh, preaching the truth and preaching what I felt uh, was the truth. And uh, I seemed really foolish. People kept on saying, what are you on here for? Um, so uh, sometimes uh, when uh, you bring forth truth, uh, that uh, you seem like a fool. Uh, the Apostle Paul said multiple times in uh, in uh, the beginning of Corinthians that uh, the wisdom of men is foolishness to God. Uh, 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 the wisdom of God is uh, foolishness to men um, and uh, that um, the carnal uh, mind cannot receive the wisdom of God. And uh, so... Uh, when you come forth with the wisdom of God and revelation of God uh, to other people that uh, don't know that revelation and if that revelation uh, contradicts what they currently believe in you, rather than uh, many people embracing the new thing and going forth with it, uh, they reject it and call you a fool. And uh, that's uh, uh, the Apostle John, uh, Apostle Paul was bringing forth new things and uh and uh the people called him a fool uh but uh, uh the people that he was teaching the people he was writing to uh paul was called the fool uh but uh they considered themselves wise in christ um we are weak like uh he had issues and troubles and uh things that uh were troubling him but you were strong, he said. Uh, the people of the Corinthians didn't seem to have any weaknesses, but I know uh, personally uh, having bipolar and sometimes uh, going to delusion and not having that lifted off my life, no one's ever uh, delivered me and set me free of my mental illness. Um, I'm always uh, considered weak and uh other people who are in their right mind are considered strong. Uh, uh, I know uh, I've got a friend, uh, Mary Gibson, who ha has watched a lot of my videos and uh, read about 70 of my books. Uh, she knows I'm mentally ill and she knows I'll probably, uh, this side of heaven, probably never lose that mental illness, but she knows I'm authentic. She knows I preach the truth. And she knows, uh, since she's known me for six years or so, I've never wavered from the truth that I preach. And uh, she would say uh, to you that I'm a lot more reliable than any other um, pastor or preacher she's ever heard. So uh, she can she can embrace me in my weakness and see that um, I'm a powerful preacher anyway. Um, but uh, not many people can do that, people... Uh, hear that uh, you're supernatural and mystical, but you're also mentally ill. And uh, so they'll side with the mental illness and say that uh, you can't be trusted. Uh, you are distinguished, but we're dishonoured. Uh, 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 so uh, many Christians uh, do enough uh, to uh, make themselves feel holy and righteous, 
uh, but they don't do enough uh, for for themselves to be dishonoured. You're dishonoured when you're making waves, when you're causing waves, and uh, you're saying things that aren't uh, accepted, and uh, you're you're pushing people. And uh, so the Apostle Paul was uh, was uh, dishonoured, uh, but uh, the people he was preaching considered themselves distinguished. Uh, verse 11, to this present hour, we both hunger and thirst. We're poorly clothed, beaten and homeless. Uh, this is the state that the Apostle Paul lived in. You, you, uh, you highly revere. Uh, if uh, you're a Christian, you probably highly revere Paul. And, uh, and I, I wouldn't consider uh, Paul... <clears throat> Being a liar, I think uh, he was a man of integrity. So I don't believe that he'd lie or tell a mistruth or say something to uh, grant people sympathy. Uh, so this is uh, the state that he lived in 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 the course of his miracle, uh, his miracle uh, working life. He hungered and thirst, which which means that uh, sometimes the actual people that he was ministering to didn't supply him with food or drink or didn't supply him uh, with enough finances for him to purchase his own uh, food and drink. Uh, sometimes he was so short of money that he couldn't eat. Uh, he he wasn't supplied with enough money uh, to clothe himself properly. He was poorly clothed. Uh, he didn't have the best suits and he didn't have the 10000 Armani suits, $10,000 Armani suits. He wasn't dressed uh, the best. Uh, and uh, in uh, certain situations, people judge how you look. Uh, uh, it, it, if I uh, appeared in a T-shirt and track pants, uh, or, or uh, yeah, I think uh, you call them uh, track pants, um, sweatpants. Uh, if I appeared in uh, sweatpants and a T-shirt, uh, and and a pullover, uh, you know, I might not be respected in a mega church. I may I need to be in some skinny jeans, or I may need to be in a suit. Uh, if you're poorly dressed, people judge you, and uh, you have to start speaking and do some miracles for them to say, "Oh, you know, this guy, this guy is really uh, called by God." But uh, he was uh, both hungry and thirsty. And uh, he was poorly dressed. He was beaten uh, so many times. Uh, Paul was beaten up. He was beaten with rods. Uh, when it says beaten with rods, uh, it actually means hit so hard with a rod that it actually bruises your bone. And uh, when you've got a, a bruised bone, it aches uh, for two to three weeks until it's healed. So uh, when uh, Paul was beaten with rods and they broke uh, they uh, bruised all his bones. That means he was in agony and hurting, and he probably didn't sleep very much uh, for two to three weeks, which uh, would have uh, given him sleep, sleep deprivation and almost uh, caused him to go insane. Uh, so there, there wouldn't just be uh, the, uh, the hurting and the pain from that. Uh, there'd be the sleep deprivation and uh, struggling with his mental health uh, because of that. And he said he, he was homeless. Uh, he didn't have a place that he could permanently sleep. Hmm. People today have an itinerant ministry. They go uh, from uh, city to city and preach at church and church. But none of them sleep out in the street and under the weather. They sleep in hotel rooms and they have a warm bed at night and uh, they've got their uh, couple of thousand dollar suits and uh, they've, they're dressed properly. They're having uh, three square meals a day. They're, they're not going thirsty or hungry. Uh, they, they are properly dressed and uh, they, uh, uh, they're not beaten and, uh, and uh, they're not homeless. And this is how Paul was. Verse 12, and we labor working with our own hands. Um, and uh, so Paul uh, was a tent maker. And I, I used to think he made tents, but I found out 
that uh, those uh, little things that uh, appear on uh, Jewish men's heads, those little cloth things that they put on their heads when they go to synagogue, uh, Paul used to make those things. And uh, he used to labor with his own hands making them. And um, I could imagine uh, selling one of them on eBay uh, today uh, made by the Apostle Paul. Uh, you'd uh, get thousands of dollars, probably tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, so uh, his he's, uh, small little business uh, raised him money. Being reviled, we blessed. Uh, so when people speak uh, wrongly about him and insult him, and of course, when he's uh, bringing fresh revelation, when he's bringing revelatory uh, information that requires change, uh, people who religious and stuck in their ways will revile you and insult you. And when he is reviled and insult, he, he sent blessings. Uh, being persecuted, we endure. So rather than uh, complaining about it and moaning about it and making a big um, song and dance about it, uh, that uh, he's being persecuted, he simply endured. He just... Uh, put up with it and pressed on. Being defamed, we entreat. So, uh, you know, uh, when people insult his name and say uh, bad things that he's done and uh, uh, defame his reputation, he uh, not only forgives the people but approaches those people and blesses those people. Uh, he entreats. We've been made the filth of the world the off-scouring of all things un until now. So I don't know what off-scouring means, but uh, being uh, made the filth of the whole world uh, sounds uh, pretty terrible. It sounds like uh, you're walking around with feces on yourself. It, 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 it sounds uh, really offensive, and uh, uh, that's how he became. And so he's leading up to say something here, um, and uh, this uh, whole message is uh, leading up to something. So verse 14, I do not write these things to shame you, but as my beloved children, I warn you. So he's, he's saying, uh, if some of you are called to be prophets and apostles, uh, this could be ahead of you. Uh, be fully warned that uh, the the work of an apostle isn't an attractive one. For you might have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. So he's saying there's a lot of teachers around. There's a lot of uh, people teaching you. I, I doubt, I, I believe that's hyperbole, uh, Paul using that exaggeration. I, I doubt the Corinthians church had uh, 10,000 teachers that were teaching. Uh, I, I guess uh, he's talking more of the internet now where there's 10,000 uh, teachers for everybody. Uh, but he's saying, I'm your spiritual father. There's only one father and I brought you into the kingdom. I fathered you. I mentored you and I'm your spiritual father. So there may be a lot of people espousing the gospel. There may be a lot of people uh, preaching uh, the gospel, you may have a lot of preachers uh, in your life, but I'm your only father, so honour and respect me uh, for that. Then he says, therefore, I urge you, imitate me. And uh, that's what I want to get to. Uh, Paul, Paul was saying uh, his life was horrendous. Uh, the cost that he paid was a daily cost. And it was a horrendous cost. Uh, he he didn't have a reputation. He was considered a fool. Uh, people mocked him. People defamed him. He was constantly homeless. He was oftentimes beaten. Uh, he was hungry. He was thirsty. He didn't have a house to sleep in. Uh, people mocked him. Uh, many people were considered smart. He was considered a fool. Uh, many people were distinguished. He was dishonored. He's saying this is the life 
that uh, you're going for, if uh, the Holy Spirit uh, puts it on your heart that you called as an apostle, if a prophet uh, in your church uh, prophesies that uh, you're called to be an apostle, uh, this is the life ahead of you. And I don't say these uh, to shame you. I don't say these things to bring a guilt trip on you. I say this to warn you. And then he says, so go ahead and imitate me. Uh, and uh, now, how how does this uh, relate uh, to us in the modern day? Well, uh, in the modern day, as a preacher, uh, uh, as someone who uh, I, ha I have uh, uh, an income that I get every two weeks that sustains me, that gives me enough food, uh, enough money to buy clothes, enough, enough to support myself. I don't go without food and drink. I'm not homeless. I've got a home. Uh, I'm, I'm defamed from time to time. People mock me, but... I often don't hear of people mocking me, people uh, who are, are spreading rumours about me being a false teacher or a warlock. I, I don't often hear those things. Um, I say some foolish things and sometimes uh, I'm saying something revelatory uh, which people can't receive. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, talked to me and, and said to me that I'm seated in heavenly places and I'm seated uh, in a realm in heaven, which is a really high realm. And I often speak from that realm. I, I speak from that place of authority, that place of high position in the heavenlies. And often I speak and uh, my speaking is too profound and it's too uh, mystical uh, for people to receive. So sometimes uh, I'm misunderstood. Uh, people ask me a question about what I'm saying. And um, so sometimes I'm misunderstood. Sometimes people speak against me. Sometimes uh, people write uh, bad reviews on my books, but I don't really have this life. Um, and uh, I don't uh, travel and speak. Uh, I, I don't have a big a following of, of people mocking me and defaming my name. But the one thing that I can personally take from this is there's hardship in the gospel. You know, uh, I, I've worked so hard uh, in the last uh, three days that I, I just needed a, a, like a spiritual rest. Of, I've got 125 pages uh, that uh, are typed up of six hours worth of preaching yesterday, a new book, and I've got a 125-page manuscript that has to be go, gone through line by line and edited. It's a lot of work and it's a lot to face, and sometimes I need to rest uh, because I'm working so hard. But I don't, haven't got it hard. I haven't got a life like Paul had, uh, but uh, I, I definitely uh, work with my hands. I definitely... Uh, work uh, for what I do and uh, I don't uh, earn an income from my books. I don't, uh, when I earn an income from uh, doing prophecies and prophetic services, all of that money uh, goes into uh, books and uh, gets spent for the kingdom. So I'm working with my hands uh, to uh, provide for what I do. Uh, but uh, what I get out of Paul is uh, that We've got to put our whole life into something and uh, we've got to work hard and not expect glory and not expect a uh, great reward uh, to just go forth and uh, be led by the Holy Spirit and do what the Holy Spirit says. Uh, so if, if you're a person who's suffered for Christ, if you're a person who's uh, been persecuted or suffered from Christ, if you're listening uh, from a persecuted country and uh, and you've experienced some of these things that Paul talks about, uh, be encouraged by uh, the life that he lived. Uh, but uh, uh, he, he says uh, later, uh, he, he uh, 
He says in another spot in Corinthians, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And I sort of uh, relate to that one uh, more than uh, this one. Therefore, I urge you imitate me uh, because uh, my life isn't, uh, I, I'm not going through the hardship uh, that uh, Paul did, uh, but it's good for us uh, to consider, it's good for us uh, to uh, see and uh, and understand. Uh, Paul had a pretty hard life, and uh, I encourage you, I, I pray that uh, you're encouraged by this teaching. God bless.